Hello friends, hope you are doing well. Welcome to our channel Metallurgy Crisp. Friends, this video is much more than Bayer's process and Hall Herald's process. In this video, we are going to understand every aspect of aluminum extraction. We start with Bayer's process, then we discuss why can't we produce aluminum using any other methods other than Hall Herald's process, and then we discuss Hall Herald's process, and then we discuss the purification of our aluminum we got from Hall Herald's process. We also discuss the problems faced by the aluminum industry and the anode effect. By the end of this video, you will be able to answer every interview question regarding aluminum extraction. Friends, this is lecture number two of extractive metallurgy lecture series. So let's start our video, aluminum extraction. Bayer's process is leaching of our ore bauxite with an AOH. The major constituents of our ore bauxite are gibbsite and diaspore. We always find our ore mixed with these two. Gibbsite consists of three molecules of water and diaspore consists of one molecule of water. If you see percentage of aluminum in both, diaspore consists of 85.4% aluminum, so comparatively far higher than that of gibbsite. But because of it is a monohydrate, its dissolution or the leaching of diaspore is difficult compared with gibbsite. Friends, we can speed up leaching by increasing the temperature. So higher the temperature, faster is our leaching process. High surface area. If the surface area of our ore bauxite is high, it dissolves quickly in the solvent NaOH. So we crush our ore before leaching in the Bayer's process. Friends, here we also require high pressure because at higher temperature, where the temperature is greater than the boiling point of water, we want water to stay in liquid state. So by increasing pressure, we increase the boiling point of water. You can understand this from Clash's Clapeyron equation. By increasing pressure, we are increasing the boiling point so that water can stay as liquid even at higher temperature. Friends, to create such conditions of high temperature and high pressure, we use autoclaves. These are completely sealed from the outer atmosphere. So friends, to keep our process at higher temperature, we give heat by passing steam to the autoclaves. This is our source of heat in this process. We go to up to the temperatures of 220 degrees centigrade and 25 atmospheres during this process. This process is carried out for 1 to 3 hours. After that, whatever we have, we call that pregnant liquor. During this process, what is happening friends? Our NaOH is dissolving alumina. Friends, now we add starch to our pregnant liquor, which settles all the impurities. We call these impurities as red mud. Friends, red mud has been the biggest problem of our aluminum industries. Red mud consists of mainly iron oxide and titanium oxide. The name red is because of the color in use because of the iron oxide. This is the reason it looks red color. There are no effective industries which can use red mud for other purposes. Only few percentage of red mud is being used in the paint industries and the ceramic industries. Rest of the red mud is stored in the huge fields and waiting for someone to find an application. After settling the red mud, we wash and filtering. These two removes are red mud. Now we are having hot liquor which consists of our alumina and NaOH. So friends, now we try to recover heat by passing hot liquor through the heat exchangers. And then we go to the process called precipitation. In this process, we precipitate our alumina. And how do we do that? By providing nuclei on which the further alumina can grow. During this process, we add fine alumina particles. These act as nuclei. So on this, the alumina from our liquor precipitates and grows. So in the end, after completion of precipitation, we separate coarse and fine particles. These coarse particles are taken as product and these fine particles are again used as nuclei for the next batch. So this process continues. Fine particles are used as nuclei for the next batch and the coarse particles are being taken as our alumina product. Friends, the coarser particles we got after precipitation undergo calcination because we need to remove water molecules. So now we have anhydrous alumina. This is our final product. And it has many applications apart from aluminum extraction, like in toothpaste, toothpaste, medicine, and aluminum extraction. Friends, now let's see some problems faced in the Bayer's process. If our ore consists of more than 5% SiO2, it is not suitable to purify using Bayer's process because silica and alumina both dissolve in NaOH, but we want only Al2O3 to dissolve. That is the main purpose of leaching to dissolve only the required element and not to dissolve any other oxides but here SiO2 also dissolves because this is basic this is acidic so which we do not want but if we have less than 5% SiO2 we use it but during the precipitation phase 
first Al2O3 precipitates because we are providing nuclei of Al2O3 particles. So first Al2O3 precipitates on these, but later SiO2 also precipitates. To avoid this, we do not complete the precipitation process. So at 90% recovery of Al2O3, we stop the precipitation process because we don't want any SiO2 precipitation. Why we do not want SiO2 precipitation is because in the product if we have SiO2, this we feed into our electrolytic cell, right? Fuses are the electrolysis. Where SiO2 do not get electrolyzed. Why? SiO2 does not dissolve in cryolite because cryolite is alumina salt. So, and here, friends, in the last video we discussed Al2O3 is the only oxide which dissolves in a salt. Oxides dissolve in oxides, salts dissolve or halides dissolve in halides. But Al2O3 is the exception which made our hall heralds process possible. But here in this case, SiO2 does not get electrolyzed. So it gets deposited in the cell, creating a lot of problems. So we always try to get almost close to 100% pure Al2O3 for using in our fused salt electrolysis, hal heralds process. So friends, now let's discuss why can't we do carbothermic reduction of aluminum. As aluminum oxide is very stable, the temperature required for carbon to reduce alumina is more than 3000 to 2000 degrees centigrade, which is very high. And at this high temperature, aluminum carbides are more stable. So instead of getting our pure aluminum, we get aluminum carbide. Again, it is difficult to extract aluminum from aluminum carbide. So even if we try to form at these high temperatures, we do not have refractories available to work at that high temperatures. So this is not even economical. Even though carbon is our cheapest possible reducing agent, the whole process becomes expensive because of the refractories and these high temperature requirements. Friends, now let's see why can't we do aqueous electrolysis? Why can't we just dissolve alumina in water and do water electrolysis? But here the problem is power potential of hydrogen is insufficient to deposit the aluminum. Friends, this concept I discussed in our first lecture, magnesium extraction, where the same principle for aluminum and magnesium. What happens even before the deposition of these metals, aluminum evolution takes place. So there is no metal deposition. So we cannot do aqueous electrolysis to produce aluminum. Friends, there is a small story regarding aluminum. In the ancient times, kings used to serve in gold and silver plates for guests. But for the emperors and kings, they used to serve in aluminum plates. Why? Because by that time, there was a lot of gold, a lot of silver was present. But very small amount of aluminum was present because there was no proper method for the production of aluminum in high scale. By some way, they used to produce small amount of aluminum and aluminum used to be more expensive than that of gold and silver. After the discovery of electricity, the process of extraction of aluminum was possible. Friends, 4 tons of bauxite gives us 2 tons of alumina from which we get 1 ton of aluminum using 0.5 tons of coke. Friends, now let's see hall heralds process. It is a steel cell coated with carbon which acts as cathode and our graphite electrodes act as anode. The electrolyte used is cryolite Ni-Na3-Alf6. We operate this cell at a temperature greater than that of the boiling point of Na3-Alf6 which is 960 to 980 degrees. So friends, when we pass electricity, Al3 plus gains 3 electrons and it drops to the bottom. Why it drops? We are going to see that and this oxygen converts into oxygen and reacts with our electrode and forms carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. So the electrodes here are being consumed and they have to be replaced frequently. Friends, to understand why alumina sinks to the bottom, let's look at the densities of our constituents. Density of alumina is 2.3 gram per cc which is the highest of all the constituents. Aluminium in liquid state has density of 2.3 gram per cc and our bath Na3LF6 is having 2.1 gram per cc which is the lightest. So for aluminium to go to settle down in the tank, density of liquid aluminium should be greater than that of the bath. What is bath? Bath is a mixture of Al2O3 and cryolite. Friends, the density of bath can be given like this. Percentage of alumina into its density and percentage of cryolite into its density and it should be less than that of liquid aluminum density. So friends, here you can see the density of alumina is very high. So with each increase in percentage of alumina, the density of the bath increases. Our limit is 2.3. So for this, if we do calculations, the maximum alumina we can give is maximum up to 5 to 10 percentage of alumina, alumina reaches this density. So even though we can dissolve more alumina up to 15 percentage in cryolite, we won't go to that extent because we always want our aluminum to settle down and protect it from the atmosphere. So we always use 5 to 10 percentage of alumina in the bath. So whenever some alumina is consumed, 
This is a continuous process, friends. Alumina is keep getting added to the bath and keep getting converted to the aluminium. So after some time, a machine comes and puts some pipe in there and sucks the aluminium out. So this process is a continuous process. Friends, now let's look at what properties should this bath have. This bath should have high ion conductivity, which means Al3 plus and O2 minus ions. These ion conductivity should be very high. Why? Our reduction of Al3 plus to Al occurs on the surface of these electrodes. All the ions, Al3 plus ions go to the surface and there they get the electrons and they settle down in the tank. So here complete aluminum reduction occurs on the surface of the electrode. So we try our level best to increase the surface area without affecting the other parameters. We increase, we try to increase the surface area of the electrode which increases the current density that we can provide which in turn gives us more aluminum. So to increase the ion conductivity, we add these two catalysts. These increase, friends remember, ionic conductivity. The electron conductivity of this bath should be zero, almost. We cannot achieve zero, but it should be very less because what happens? If we pass electricity and this bath conducts electrons, there is no reduction of aluminum. This bath, it is like a short circuiting. There is no production of aluminum. So friends, if bath is having low electron conductivity, which means high resistance, so whenever we pass electrons, there is a small arc generation between the electrodes and the bath, which heats the bath, which helps our bath to stay at the temperature ranges of 960 to 980 degrees centigrade. So we always want all the current that we are passing is being consumed by Al3 plus ions and to produce aluminum. We do not want any other reactions to consume the current passing by us. The main purpose of passing current is for Al3 plus ion to provide electrons to Al3 plus ion and to produce aluminum. Some amount of current is being consumed in increasing the temperature of the bath and to keep our process continuously at this temperature. Friends, here we supply high current, not voltage. We keep voltage such a low value such that it is sufficient or it is equal to the decomposition voltage of aluminum. Not more than that because here we are giving electrons. More electrons we supply, more aluminum we get. Voltage is doing nothing. Voltage's purpose is to decompose. It, it should be greater than that of the decomposition voltage of our aluminum. Friends, as we discussed, amount of increase in current increases aluminum production. But it is being limited by the surface area of the electrode. The current density, the amount of current per unit area for these electrodes is fixed. We cannot go unless we increase the surface area of the electrode. But by increasing the surface area of the electrode, we create a lot more problems because increasing surface area means increasing the electrolytic cell volume. Friends, this is a continuous process. Aluminium is being produced continuously. It slowly increases and then a machine comes and takes aluminium. And there is a continuous process of addition of our Al2O3 into the process to maintain the levels in 5 to 10 percent all the time. And these electrodes, even though I'm showing just two electrodes, friends, usually there are some 20 electrodes per electrolytic cell. Per... Now let's see what happens when our aluminum bath in the bath comes percent is less than this if Al2O3 is less than 2 percentage then we face a problem because we're passing current so there are a lot of current is here but there are not many Al3 plus ions around in the electrode friends you need to understand everything is occurring at the electrode because electrons cannot come into the bath because bath has no electron conductivity so around the electrode if we do not have Al3 plus ions the some other ions which are around the electrode gets reduced so in this case, because our whole bath consists of fluoride ions, they get reduced and they react with our graphite electrodes. So these produce chlorofluorocarbons. These stick at the bottom of these electrodes. So this is like a thick layer of these gases in between the electrode and the bath. Now there is a separation between the bath and the electrodes. This gas layer increases the resistivity of the whole system, which in turn what happens once if resistance is increasing for the same amount of energy, current is decreasing, which means the desired product, desired amount of aluminum we are not able to produce. So to produce the same amount of aluminum, we need to increase the current flow rate. Here we are wasting a lot of unnecessary energy. The voltage of this cell is very high, which we do not need. We already discussed the amount of voltage is just more than that of deposition or dissociation potential of our aluminum. But because of this, the resistance is extremely high, which we do not want. So this is highly undesirable for our aluminum extraction. So the, all the care must be taken to avoid anode effect by maintaining our alumina content 5 to 10 percent. But still, but still anode effect occurs. But how do we tackle in industrial scale? Friends, there are always some pack of bamboo sticks. The bamboo sticks are just around the electrolytic cell. So whenever there is anode effect, 
by we can see by increasing the voltage so whenever there is an anode effect we put these bamboo sticks at the bottom of our electrodes these bamboo sticks are we know that they are having a pockets so these pop this pop at the bottom of the electrodes hence removing the bottom layer of this cf4 and c2f6 this is how we get rid of anode effect in industry so friends if you look at the basic equation alumina in pyrite reacts with carbon producing alumina carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide this depends on the amount of potential we are applying friends let's look at the energy consumption during alumina extraction the bauxite processing caustic soda recycling and aluminum production this almost takes 30% of total energy and the remaining is taken by the smelting and anode production this aluminum extraction is highly energy intensive it depends on it consumes a lot of energy in the total cost 40% or more than 40% of cost is mainly for electricity so friends our india is not having high amount of you know electricity production methods so this is the reason government is giving permissions to aluminum plants to set up their own thermal power plants most of the aluminum industries that are existing now are already having their own thermal power plants but here also there is a huge problem of the as production and there is no other application of this as generated in thermal power plant so friends the two main problems faced by the aluminum industry is the ash coming from the thermal power plant and the red mud from the waste process there are no other applications for these two problems so they, these are consuming a lot of area just to store these without having any purpose friends the aluminum produced by hall hall's process gives us almost 99% pure aluminum and this is sufficient for a lot of applications but for electrical purposes and all we need to further purify this and to get almost 99.99% of purity for this we have the hoops process let's discuss that friends we got 99.5% as pure aluminum from hall herald's process now by using hoops process we produce 99.99% as pure aluminum so let's see how does this work <coughs> friends we call three layer purification here in the bottom layer we take aluminum copper alloy as anode and we keep adding impure aluminum or our commercial grade aluminum which we got from hall herald hall herald's process this acts as anode and our graphite this acts as cathode which means so the main purpose here the electrolyte consists of naf baf2 alf3 friends if we see in simple terms here this is anode and here al3 plus generation will be there and its density is 4.5 greater than that of the rest two so this is the bottom layer electrolyte is having 2.8 gram per cc density and pure aluminum in liquid state is having 2.3 so at anode al3 plus generation is there and this electrolyte facilitates the transfer of these ions just like some impervious layer which allows the transfer of only al3 plus ions so here since this is cathode here al3 plus gains three electrons and forms pure iron so this is the complete process of hoops process purification of aluminum this process is also continuous friends al3 plus generation al3 plus consumption production of pure aluminum this aluminum is being removed and our impure aluminum or commercial grade aluminum is continuously being added this copper aluminum alloy because its density is high and it settles down so that is the reason we use this alloy by this process friends we can produce purity of almost greater than or equal to 99.99% is pure aluminum this is it in this video friends thank you so much for watching if you are having any doubts please join our telegram group metallurgy crisp just by searching that term you are going to find the channel just join that channel and post any doubts that you are having if you like the content please do like and subscribe take care